In uh, this video today, we'll be looking at H columns. So in the model here, I've got a typical H column. And if you're curious about the profile, if I click on the column and I look at the profile and I click the profile catalog, I've used, just used a normal, I think it says II there, uh, I profiles, II brackets concrete. And all I did is for the SFT and SFB uh, slopes, I used a zero value so it squares out and I've just given it some concrete dimensions. So it, it's, a, it's a fairly easy column to create from a concrete point of view. Um, so with that, uh, let's have a look at today's target in terms of reinforcement. So if I drag this little sketch across, um, the objective is um, we want to create one, two, three sets of closed ligatures. And those ligatures are um, we just get there, it's N16s at 300, and this one is N16s at 300, and then this one here is also N16s at 300. So that will form the uh, closed loop uh, around uh, all four, you know, the web and the flanges. And then um, in the middle, we've got an extra uh, 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 ligature or stirrup that uh, um, braces these four middle bars, and those are R12s at 300. And then for the rest, the remainder of this, they have clips spaced uh, at 300 and they are 12 uh, clips uh, with a 135 degree hook and a 90 degree hook for easy fixing. And then lastly, if we look at the uh, vertical bars, so on this uh, um, side here, yeah, the engineer is calling for six N28s each face, which is this face and that face. And then on the opposite side, it's the same six N28s each face, this one, this one. And then in the middle section, he's calling for four N28s each face. Now, also, if we look at the uh, longitudinal section vertical, he wants a cog at the top with a 500 extension. And then down the bottom, he's got the 500 uh, uh, extension with a cog. And also, he's defining that the long dimension of the bar to be 2000. So, in other words, that is a standard hook. And then this leg of the um, starter bar uh, must be 2000. And then the lap type is also specifying a crank lap type. So with that in mind, let's see how we can achieve this uh, in today's video. So uh, to start out with, uh, I will uh, control P just so I'm in a rendered, a rendered view. So I'll go control P and then what I'll do is I'll just generate a few more sections uh, that we might need. So I'll go view list and I will have a section on the grid line two. I also think we need one on grid line A, which is basically down the center of the column if we need to view any of those. And then I also think it's good practice to have a top and a bottom of the column uh, visible. So once we've got that, what we can do is just go back to any view where the column actually shows up and say, click, uh, set the work in all views. So we just make sure that we get the view. So this is control P, just make sure that it's, this is on grid line A, elevation on grid line A. And if we look at the grid line two, so we're not seeing anything on grid line two. So let me just quit that and go uh, back to the, let me just make sure that, oh, okay. We do want it on grid line two. So how come it's not seeing grid line two? Grid line two, if we go in here, say control P and then say entire model just quickly. So for some reason, it looks like grid line two is not showing up. Uh, let me see if I can regenerate that view quickly. Sometimes these things do happen. So if I go to grid line two and I delete it, okay, and we go to new view and we say along grid lines, and then um, we want this to be in the, if you look at the planes here, we want this to be in the ZX, so this one, and we want, um, let's say if the last uh, grid elevation elevation so if we say and these should be none because we don't want to generate any of that we don't want to generate any of these and we just say great so it's recreated grid too fast and if we double click we can now see it's been fixed so obviously i must have changed grids at some point and uh, didn't regenerate the view. So that's just a bit of a uh, sidestep to see how we can rectify that. Okay, so that, that is our 3D view. So let me just make sure, click on it, right click, fit work areas in all views, just to make sure they're the same in all views. So that will be our rendered view. This will be our elevation A view, which is you, you're basically looking on the, on the web and these are the two flanges. And if we go to uh, A, this is a plan view down the bottom of the column. 
Uh, this is uh, elevation at the top of the column. And then lastly, grid line two, you just make sure control P. So this is looking at the, the flange and you can see the web is dotted there. So we've got all our, our views ready to go and I'll make this transparent. So it's more obvious what's going on. So, so let's start and just look how we're gonna reinforce this. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and stick to rebar, uh, rebar uh, sets as much as possible because of the power of um, uh, layering that, that, that it provides and also, um, the ease of use really to add in modifiers and splitters and, and uh, so forth. So <clears throat> for this, let me just show, if we go to a crossing bar and I go to the catalog and I pick the um, engineers asking for the N12s, uh, N16s at, at 300, so they will be uh, off top uh, stirrup. And then we would can stick to our five color and let's say the spacing is at 300. If I hover over this, it's giving me an H profile. And if I select it, we can see this is not the desired result because we want these. Now, what we can do is we can select three of these faces and then just add a, a, a manual face or otherwise we can select four of these and then stretch that face, but that is too much work. So an easier way to do those leakages is to actually go to the bottom at, at, at level zero and then go under more, go pick point and under pick point, go normal range. Make sure that our settings are correct and they're not. So, well, actually they are, I beg your pardon, they are correct. And then what we can do is we can just follow the bar. So what we can do is start at this point, all the way across to there, down to the bottom, back, and back to the origin. Middle mouse to accept the, the, the shape. And then it's asking for the start and end position. So if we click here as a start, and the top of the column as an end, it will then give us the ligatures as expected correctly. Now, all we need to do with this ligature is to add our end detail. So if we click on the end detail, and for the end detail type, we are looking at a 135 degree, and that's all we need. So now we can just hover over the edge of the concrete and apply it, and just like that, we've got the, the a ligature and now before we copy this ligature a mirror to the other side because these two sides are identical what we need to do is just look at the spacing so if we go to grid 2 to see this from elevation what we can do the engineer is asking for the spacing at 300 now we've picked the target spacing a target spacing and um we can see that the 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 um spacing uh, optimized isn't quite 300 now that doesn't really matter but in terms of drawings, it does matter because it just doesn't look as good, especially if this is going to be a prefabricated gauge. So what we can do is we can change our, our um, if we look at our guideline, we can see the arrow is pointing upwards, which implies that the start of this range is at the bottom. So what we can, knowing that, what we can do is we can say, okay, at the bottom, we do want a 75 millimeter kicker. What that gives us is, and I'll say okay, what that gives us is a 50 millimeter kicker for concrete to fix our formwork to and a 25 uh, spacing just for the first rebar. And at the end, we will want to maintain a 50 millimeter cover. So we'll enter that. And then for the spacing, what we can say is we go by exact spacing. And from the previous video, which also dealt with a five meter column with spacings at 300, we've learned that 16 bars fit in exactly. So we can say 16 at 300. And once we enter that, we can see we get a very good um, layout. So if I click on the bar, click on the spacing line, go to show me the dimensions, we can now see we've got a 75 at the bottom, we've got exactly 16 at 300, and then we've got 75 at the top. So we've asked for 50, but we ended up with 75. So it's a really good outcome. So um, the reason why I like to use exact spacings uh, a lot of the time is really only for drawing purposes. It does make drawing and annotating rebar draw in, in drawings more uh, easier and more sensible. Uh, you won't be sitting with, with silly dimensions. Now, having done that, what we can do is flick over to our zero level, which is at the bottom of the column, and take this bar now and say right click, copy special, mirror, and we can mirror it about our X axis and say copy, and we have the bar replicated on the opposite side. Now we can look at the middle ligature. So in there, the engineer is also call, uh, calling for exactly the same uh, uh, bar and exact same spacing. So the way we can deal with that is um, we can say uh, again more point input. 
okay and make sure that we go for the linear input uh, all the grid, uh, all the dimensions will just leave the same for now and then what we'll do is we need to start snapping at one of these corners so what i normally do is i just pick a point like for instance there and i say control do you have it as a temporary snap and then start my first point there now i know this is a 300 uh, web so i'll click 300 and then over to the other side then 300 and then back to the start so that completes the shape of the bar and we can middle mouse to accept that and now all we need to do is um, deal with the spacing so let's just pick a, a corner snap so it's from the bottom to the top now when i insert these bars and i keep uh, uh, pick a spacing i'm always aware of the direction of the spacing line so i can measure everything from the bottom so i can control that they don't clash because at the moment you can see they're exactly in the same plane as that and we're going to fix that now we're just going to sort out these quickly so if i click on this bar and i enable the leg faces the first thing we want to do is just re-click it first thing we want to do is this is now moved to the layer two so i'll click on that layer and i'll force it into layer one into layer one so it pushes it to the outside of fiber and then on this side the same if i click on that face i'll force it into the first layer so it pushes it out to the side and if we look at the uh, 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 web it's already in layer one so that's all good and now lastly what we can do is put an ear on this thing so if we click on it we can then go in detail we've still got that settings and if we just hover over okay so that you can see there's no point to hover on so what we can do here is we can pick our multi-point input and we can click that point and we can click the top point there and if we then middle mouse button it will add an ear on that corner for us on both sides and i'll just set this back to a single line input okay so now now that we've got that if i go back to our elevation uh, and let's go to grid line a at this because that will show it better if we now look at these and this is the ones we've just inserted they now because of the 75 and the 50 they're exactly in the same plane as the previous so what we can do with those we can move them up so if we just and we also need to cover for basically two bar diameters now this is a, a, a 12 millimeter bar a 16 rather if you go 16 a 16 bar but if we go to the catalog again if we look at 16 this is a tie strip so we're really dealing with 19. so if we look at at uh, uh, the bar diameter so we need you need to move it at least one two up so it's 38 millimeters so if we add 38 to that um you know we'll probably get a more sensible but i'm just going to take a stab in the dark and i'm going to make it 120 more sensible so that lifts it up sufficiently i mean it's a bit much i suppose the 38 will have been uh, like smack bang on that but let's let's leave the fixer a bit of grace to work with so that lifts that bar up nicely and let's just have a look at the top now and the top also works out quite nicely so with that i think that uh, sort of um, takes care of the the uh, main leeches in the two flanges and in the web and now with that what we can do now is before we uh, put in the internals the the red bars let me just drag my image before we deal with these clips and this intermediate bar we really need to to get our verticals going because the verticals um you know we need the verticals to actually determine the position of these clips so uh, with the verticals bear in mind we've got uh, six on this side which is replicated and then we've got four in the center they all uh is the value um they 28 28 millimeters or 28 diameter bars and um they are extended by 500 on top and bottom they've got a cog on both ends and we have a crank lap at 200 millimeters from the bottom of that bar so with that let's see how we can achieve that so the first thing i'm going to do is i'll go to our rendered view and i'll just uh, um, get a 3d view on it and then what i'll do here is we use longitudinal bars and for the type of the bar we'll head over to the n28 main bars now remember just it's a it's a 32 bar as a deformed bar okay and then for the start and end i am going to clear those values and remember there's a difference between a clear value and a zero a zero is a zero but if you clear the field tech does an auto calc in other words it will try and fit it in there without clashing with the other bars and then for the spacing i'm just going to say uh give me a target spacing of 300 for now let's just see what happens so if i click in there and i pick i want to reinforce this side but i also want to reinforce that side so at the same time i can then say okay and then tecla uh, puts the vertical bars in now um, let's just change the uh, class of that first so we can just see a bit of a coloration so traditionally we're using blue for vertical so we go modify and we can see that's generated the two faces for us quite nicely 
and then what we can do is we can start dividing this up now if we go control p and we look at the top we can see there's a bit of an issue yeah you you'd ultimately like to put these in yeah and if we look if we take an f and we just look at the spacing tickers currently working out it's 169 millimeters as opposed to the 300 i think that we've uh, targeted so as a first rule of thumb when i get something like that what i do is i mean you could go to exact spacing and space them exactly in this way but then you need to know the dimensions so what i always do as a first rule of thumb is if i look at this the only odd spacing really yeah is going to be this one so what i do is i go to target spacing and i say give me a flexible middle space and if i then say modify i mean look at that i mean uh, a lot of times 90 percent of the times it resolves itself um just by doing that and uh it, it, it's a it's a good outcome and now if we look at you know what we've got here if i go f to measure again between that bar and that bar we have exactly 300 that bar and that bar we've got exactly 300 and now between that bar and that bar we've got 300 and that bar and that bar it's 300 and then what remains is whatever the flexible space we've asked for in this case it's 148 millimeters and that doesn't matter but the point here is the bars are actually correct now what we can do with the other side is we can purely click on these bars and then go to, go over to our painter click on our painter click the opposite side and say modify and then it uh, copies the values across and it's fixed that instantly now what we can also do is we can grab this well before we we can now mirror it to the inside but before we do that we might as well finish the bar off we could have actually finished the bar off before we do that so maybe we, uh, uh, let's do that i'll delete that one and we can just finish this one off and mirror it all over the place so what we can do is we go yeah and we say because he wants the long leg of this to be two meters we really need to extend this bar first so we can see where it ends so i'll switch off my leg visibility so it just shows up a bit better and then what i will do is i'll go to end detail and i'll just load any defaults that i had so it can flash my uh, uh, input because tecla remembers your previous settings so i do want a 90 degree hook um, and then um, for the adjustment type i do want to extend so we've got an end offset or a leg length we do want to extend these bars by 500 millimeters okay and then when i hover over that edge of the concrete it will then extend the bars and now we can clearly see there we have a, a, a orientation problem so if i click on that property modifier or end modifier again i can just go to the hook orientation or rotation i can say swap it by 180 degrees and that fixes up that and now what we can do is we can apply the same at the top because it's exactly the same setting so end modifier hover over that edge and it does it for us and now the only thing we need to do that bar is split it with a crank type and make sure that this leg is 200 so how do we do that if we click on the bar we can then head over to the splitter and for the splitting type we need a crank and then um uh for the crank side now if i hover over this this bar you'll see it it gives us a dimension if i hover over the bar it actually you see the 245 uh is, is a dimension of that leg so if i if i'm closer to the side it's going to draw like in that direction so we know we want the leg to, uh, the uh, lap to be on the right which is the bottom part so if i hover over this engine you, i can now move this up i'm a bit too low there 1600 18 there we go so that blue line the the, the right hand side one that says two meters is actually the leg length that's doing there and if i then click you can see we have a bar at two meters and with a crank to the top so just to show what i meant if i click here and i say give me a list on these groups and right click inquire we can see techless generated the long leg of the bar to be two meters and then our cog is a standard hook which is 350 so it's nice dimensions for the bars so with that that bar is now complete so what we can do is if we go to our bottom view we can now take those bars because we know they're correct and say um just right click and we can say select the, the 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 window first then right click oops that's interesting if we say um copy mirror and we can pick this axis and we say copy oh that's interesting let me just go back to our rendered view and just see if we've got an issue here so if i click on this and say right click it's not bringing up the 
for some reason it's not bringing up the um, commands um, we just escape make sure I'm out of all commands if I click on the bar right click Wow oh it's because um, you have to be in a uh, rebar set mode, I think. There we go. So down the bottom, yeah, sometimes what happens, if, if you're still in the group mode like which I was, if I click, yeah, right click, I don't get the command. So if I'm back into my rebar set, because I'm working with rebar set, if I now click on the rebar set, right click, I get my command. So also, again, uh, something you've got to be aware of. As long as you, when you hit a problem, you don't understand why things are happening, know how to resolve them. It's, it's good. So it's good in a video that things like this happen, so we can know how to fix it. So with that, what we can now say is copy special mirror and let's just mirror this to that flange first so we'll pick that point and we'll pick the x-axis and say copy so that will give us a, a bar on that side and now what we can do with those two bars and what I'll do is just make sure remember when we mirror and copy the lap uh, a turn so what we can do is click on this click on the uh, splitter you can see that this is in the wrong side and we can just swap the direction of that line and that fixes up that for us and now that we know both of those are fixed what we can do is click this one, shift, click the other one, right click, uh, copy special mirror, and this time mirror about the center x axis, copy. And just like that, we've now replicated those bars on both those ends. So now, lastly, uh, what we need to do if we go back to plan zero with these is we need to deal with this internal, internal sidebars. So again, what we can do with that is we can grab our our uh, longitudinal bars and just have a look at the settings. So all these settings are fine. Um, let's just go back to a target again of 300. And what I'll do is I'll click on, on the shape and then pick this side to only reinforce this side and say OK. So if we look at that and we click on this, it's managed to fit four in, which fits the spec. Um, if we see that's 900, it's, it's quite obvious that it fits, but it's really close to the corner there. If we look at the control P, it's very close to the corner there. So we need to pull that away a little bit. And uh, maybe let's just target a 100 millimeters away. So it's 100 on the start and 100 at the end. If we do that, that works a lot better. So if we look at that now, that is perfect. Okay, now what we need to do is just end those bars off. So if I click on this bar, we can then go and say, give me an end detail. And we have the settings as before. So what we can do again, we can just hover over the edge there and it applies that. And while we add it, if we look at that, we can see we've got a clash at the bottom here. Yeah? Now, normally with detailing, you wouldn't worry too much about it because on site, they'll just put that one on top of this one and the splice is the diameter of that bar higher it just doesn't matter um, but what we can do yeah just to be absolutely correct we can say instead of extending at 500 so if i click on the uh end modifier in, 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 instead of um doing a 500 there let's lift it to a round number like a 450 so it puts it above it as you can see there or maybe that's a bit too much so if we go that's a, a 28 bar, so it's got a 32. So if we take um, 500, uh, it's 470, 468. So if we extend this to, um, let me just click on the problem. If we extend this by 468, then it lies exactly on the other bar, 100%. As you can see there, it's a perfect fit. So what we can do, now all we need to do is on the top, when we apply the modifier on the top, we make it longer by that much and we still end up with the same bar. So if we go end modifier, yeah, so instead of using 438, we're gonna use uh, 532. And if we hover over that edge, we then get the bar lengthened by the same amount. So basically it's hooking on the top, yeah, but it's hooking on the bottom there. So in terms of length, these and those will be exactly the same. And now all we need to do is make sure that this laps at two meters. So the way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna select the concrete and those bars, and I'm just gonna isolate them for a minute, show only selected by holding in the shift key. And then what I'm gonna do is click on the bar, go to our splitter, our settings are still as before. And then if we hover over the line, we can see that 2.12050 meters. If I click there now, that will split the bar and again we've got a problem with the direction so 
So if we then say, yeah, just uh, split on the left, modify, that changes it around. But now we've got our, our uh, um, how can I say, uh, it, it gives us a red because this is not high enough. So if I just drag this up a little bit, just so that you can see that fixes the problem. And then if we click on the thing, it shows us, yeah, what the height is. So if we just keep on dragging, we can then just head up to, oops, too much, two meters. And that, that sort of, now we see we've got a perfect two meter leg there. Now in essence, that completes that bar. And now what we can do is if we go back to control P, we can grab that bar now, right click and say, copy, mirror, and you can mirror it about the, um, Y axis copy to replicate it on the other side. Now remember with any uh, 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 mirror um, exercise, we need to go and look at our lap again because tech that does uh, sometimes flip it. And in this case it has, you can see it's flipped. So if we now click on this bar and we click on that, we can just say swap the direction and it fixes up that. So if we now redraw all to see all our bars, we're almost there. All we need to do now is, is to look at the, um, the clips now what i really want to do is i want to take the concrete right click and say inquire cost unit and i just want to look at see what they've given us on this now you can see with that little bit of magic we did with moving this bar up and uh, and moving it up at the bottom with the modifiers the equal amounts so they don't clash with that we haven't actually changed the length of the bar so you can clearly see yeah we we now dealt with two different um you know, two different uh, 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 bars only. So um, it's it's pretty good. I mean, there's only one, two, three, four, five lines in this. So um, I think it's it's good detailing. So what we can do now is um, we can head over to the uh, plan view and start putting in. Um, I think that we'll do the um, the one in the middle first, the ligature in the middle. Now, what I like to do, yeah is to um, use the bottom of the bar to draw a to draw a con uh, construction line. So I'm in plan view, so I'm going to be drawing at the bottom. Make sure that control P that you are control P that you are actually in an author mode and make sure you're drawing on the view plane. And then what you can do is you can initiate your construction line. I've got a shortcut L for it. And then I can draw a line on the middle of those bars. Now uh, the reason why I'm drawing construction lines is we don't have a concrete face to work on here. And we know from previous videos that if you don't have a concrete face, the face of the rebar you're going to be drawing is going to be in the center of the bar. So if we aim for the center of the bar to miss this bar, what we need is we need half this bar's value and then half the bar we're using's value. So if we just uh, bring up our calculator quickly, so if we go there, we know that a 28 bar from our uh, previous, and maybe we can just refresh quickly. If I click on the bar, and we go to the catalog. We know that a 28 bar has a 32 diameter, and we know that the um, red ligatures he's asking for is a, R, a R12. And we head over to the R12, we can see that's a round bar. So the nominal and the actual is the same. So it's six millimeter we're looking at. Now, if we go back to our uh, uh, calculator, we know that um, the 32 by uh, half is 16 millimeters, and we know that we need to add the six to it. So we look, we're targeting 22 millimeters. So with that, what we can do is we can go to edit, edit, construction object, and we can say uh, copy with offset. And in this little block, we can now type in 22 millimeters. And if we head over to that, we can offset that. And once we have that, we can grab those two and say, uh, copy mirror and we do that about the x-axis and we say okay it replicates it on the other side now we have the points we need to draw our ligature and uh, we're going to be doing that by using rebar and we're going to do the point input the linear point input and then for the rebar we're going to head over to r round bars we're going to head over to a ligature tie okay we'll be using the red bar and then for the offsets, um, I think let's just use um, the values uh, from before, which is uh, say 75 and 50. And then for the spacing, let's match the spacing we had before, which is a 16 times 300. All right, so uh, we'll have to do an adjustment to the start uh, so it doesn't uh, clash with the uh, these little blue ones, but let's just see what we get. So if I click there, to the opposite side, 
to the opposite side to there to there and I accept the shape we can then say the range is from the bottom yeah all the way to the top and if I do that it adds the bar now first things first if we go control P to look at the top again in terms of those ends, you can see those bars are perfect because we worked out the value is perfect. So it's exactly, this bar is exactly going to be around. But in terms of this, because we added this one first, it's an outside layer. That one's in the second layer. This one's going to be in the third layer. So we just swap around and we bring up our leg faces and we look at this face. Yeah, we can then see it's, it's an L3. So if we click on the face, we can then force that into L1 because that's what we wanted. So it pushes it with the um, cyan leaks. And if I click this side, I can force that into a first layer. And if we look at control P from the top again, we can see how nicely that now hugs, um, hugs the bar and then that actually works very nice. We might just leave it there because we've um, picked the same spacing as these bars and those were up. So this is gonna be below. So that's 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 good spacing. I mean, if it's, if it's too close, we can always go and say, let me just select the bar. We can always say, give us 100 millimeters here and uh, see what happens. If we say um, 100 and we, let's keep it 50. We'll just make it 100 there. It pushes it up a bit closer to that leg. It just looks a bit neater. So that works. And now all we need to do, if I click on that so I can get these notes, we need to add an end modifier. So if we go end modifier and we go to our 135 degree, and I'm just going to make that zero again. And there's no end offset, so there's no adjustment there. So what we can do now is uh, also make sure that we click the point input because there's no face there to click on. And if I click that point and I hover over to the top and I click that point and I middle mouse, it then creates the ears for us perfectly around that bar. So let's just have a look quickly. If I take that bar and oh, my fair faces on, let me just switch my faces off quickly so I can actually select the others. So if I click this bar, and this bar and this and that and I isolate them go um, uh, show only selected holding your shift key that isolates those and if we look at the outcome of that we can see it's really produced a good looking bar exactly in the right place and you have full control of how you how you got that the only thing is just yeah you you know around the where it becomes doubles you'll have an issue but on site what you probably find on site what the guys will do on site when they fix that they'll just rotate this 45 degrees so you so they both slot in there and they're not an issue anymore or otherwise what you can do if it's a really an issue and you can't you can't do that on site you can click on the modifier and try and convince the engineer to use a 90 degree welded or closed leak and it sorts out that problem just like that okay so let's move on so lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to do the clips and uh, they are fairly simple exercise. So we do exactly the same approach as there. Now, in the meantime, we've lost our construction line. So if I go to the little eye, I can see they switched off. So if I click there, they're back. And now that I can see them, I can delete them. I don't need them anymore. So in here, we can do exactly the same. So if we draw a construction line from this end of the bar to that end to get the middle, and then again, the clips he's asking for, let me just get my picture again. If we look at these clips, he's also using for, he's asking for R12s at 300. So what we can do is we can say, uh, I've got a hotkey called Control O. Uh, I picked it up from my days with AutoCAD. Uh, so I just made these the same because I remember it. But what Control O gives you is the same as going to edit construction line you can see it's highlighted there because it's active it's copy with offset and then in the value here we can type in our 22 again and then we can just offset this bar to get the position that we want to do and now what we can do is we go back to rebar and we go to more and we go to point input make sure that we're picking a linear input these values are the same as before and i'm not going to change anything and all we need to do now is we need to click from this point to this point and say middle mouse and then it's asking for the range and the range will be from this to the top and once we do that we get a straight line and now all we need to do is that will be if i just click on yeah that will be in the same elevation as the previous bar so that will work good for us so what we can do now is if i click that bar and i enable our leg faces so we can just have a note to click to what i can do is i can say okay now that i've got that I can say add an end detail 
And on this side, let me just grab my picture again. On this side, he wants a 90 degree. On the opposite side, he wants 135 degree. Okay, so what we do is we go, we've got 90 degrees. We've got everything ready to go here. I'll make sure that I'm on multi-point pick mode. I click the, the, well, I've got to highlight the bar. Just make sure it's highlighted. So I click on the bar, make sure it's highlighted. In detail, make sure I'm on multi-pick mode. Pick that node and then up to the top node and middle mouse and it will create the 90 degree hook around that bar for us and if we hover over to the other side we can then go to the bottom again i like to maintain the same direction so i know where my start and ends are and then for the end modifier we're going to change the 90 degree to 135 degree because that's what we want so if we pick this point now and all the way to the top to that point and we say middle mouse we get the desired result so if we look at that and i'll go control P to get it in plan again we can see we've got a a perfectly defined uh, uh, clip there that wraps around those two bars and the spacing is also correct it's clash free so now all we need to do here is to say click on the bar and we go copy mirror and i'll mirror about the center which is the y-axis in this case and say copy that will replicate it on the other side for us and now that we have that what we can do is click this bar and it's mate and say copy mirror and this time center of the column and the x-axis and say copy clear and like that we have now completed our exercise in full we've got clips on the loose bars and we have um, you know the uh, vertical bars are in and they clash free and they're all the same size they have the laps this bar is a two meter long bar it's got a crank lap and um, it's looking pretty good so what i could do is if i take this and i say right click and i say hold hide just to get the reinforcement on its own what i can do is just bring the sketch along quickly and have a look at what we've achieved so i know that's going to go away but let me just see if i can get it sort of the same so if we bring our sketch up again uh that is the incorrect sketch that was the previous diesel sketch so if we look at this uh, what we've got is we've got these six bars which is those six we've got its mates which is its face we've got it replicated on the other side and we then have the four in the middle which is these four here we've got a clip clip which is those two and we have a ligature in the center which is that one so with that that complicated column is detailed and uh well i hope you enjoyed this 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 video and um you know, I'll see you in the next one.